Tremendous. Right, you're staying to listen to the reading of Exodus chapter 34. If you've got a Bible, if it's on your phone, and, and there's some like technology that knows if you're looking at your phone whether you are looking at the Bible or not. Um, uh, it's Exodus 34 from verse 29. Um, in, in the red Bible um, that I was given as I came in, it's on page 94. So Exodus 34 from verse 29. The radiant face of Moses. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them. So Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished, finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. Um, Bob Barstow, our wonderful associate vicar, is going to bring the word of the Lord to us today. Um, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Chris. It's good to see everyone. Um, happy, nearly, is it June? Nearly June. It's, it's this bank holiday weekend. It's like, feels like there's holidays all the time at the moment. It's great. I love it. Um, today, I want to talk to you on the subject of what it means to be a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit. What does it mean to be a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you a story about my friend. He's called Dinindu Bandara. Short, we'll call him Din. Um, Din and I, we went to school together. We went to primary school and secondary school together. And we actually both joined the school at the same time. Um, so we were new kids in this new terrifying school. And we sat next to each other and we were both totally compliant. We did exactly what, um, what we were told to do. We, we, we sat next to each other and we became great friends. We played football together. We played cricket together. We even formed a band together. Din played rhythm guitar and I played lead guitar. It was great. We were really, really, really good friends. I was a Christian and Din wasn't a Christian. He had a kind of, he had a, like a Buddhist background. His parents grew up in Sri Lanka, uh, but we both found ourselves um, growing up together in the northwest of England in this small town. And, and, and we were great friends. I remember I used to invite Din along to kind of stuff around church because I was kind of going to church and I was a Christian, and uh, he wasn't interested at all. He just wasn't bothered by it. I even prayed quite a lot for Din, and nothing really happened. When we were 17, uh, Din and I were trying to, I think we were, um, has anyone heard of MSN Messenger? Does anyone remember MSN Messenger? So it's like, a in, yes, John does. It's like an instant, it's like a chat thing where you, it's like text, but old fashioned text messaging. Um, I can't really think of another way to describe Facebook Messenger, that's it. That's how to describe it. It's like Facebook Messenger, but old. And, and Din and I were talking to each other on MSN Messenger. I can't really remember what about. But eventually he started opening up about some kind of hard stuff that was going on in his life. And, and, and I said to him, Din, why don't you... Um, I said, I typed, so I'm just going to do this with my hands. So I said to him, Din, why don't you tell... You could tell Jesus about that. You, you could try praying, if you ever considered praying. And we had a bit of back and forth, and eventually, I remember it as clear as day, he wrote in the chat, Bob, 
thank you for telling me about all of this, but please no more. I'm afraid this just isn't for me. And in that moment, I thought, what? God, are you even real? Do you even, do you even work, God? Do you, like, what's the point? What's the point in me being a Christian if, if this guy who's going through some really hard stuff you're not appealing to him right now. Like, what's the point? Uh, have I done something wrong? Like, is this, isn't this faith supposed to be irresistible? What, what am I even supposed to do as a Christian? I thought this was what I was supposed to do as a Christian. Have you ever wondered what you're supposed to do as a Christian? Have you ever wondered what it means to be a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit? We hear this phrase, don't we, filled with the Spirit. But what does it, what does it mean? You turn up to church on a Sunday or maybe you're in a small group in the week. Maybe, maybe you believe a certain set of doctrines or like a moral code and you think this is what it means to be a Christian. Maybe you invite your friends or your colleagues along to church services. But is this, is this it? Is this what a Christian does? What does Christianity, what does faith in Jesus Christ, what does being filled with the Holy Spirit actually mean for our day-to-day lives? And today I want to look at that question. And maybe you're here and you're not a Christian and you're thinking this is irrelevant. It's a very good question to ask. Like what difference would this make to my life? Today around the world, Chris said earlier, the church is celebrating Pentecost. This is Pentecost Sunday. There are three big calendar moments in the Christian year. Well, there's lots, but three big ones. There's Christmas when Jesus Christ, God, was born as a man and he came to earth. Second one is Easter, is the Easter season when Jesus, we, when the Christians celebrate that Jesus, he died and rose again, that there's an empty tomb. And the third thing is Pentecost, the third festival is Pentecost, when Jesus poured, God poured his spirit out onto his disciples, onto his followers, onto all people. It's what we're celebrating today. It's sometimes referred to as the birth of the church. So today, I have my happy birthday socks on. There they are. Um, It's the birth of the church. The Spirit was poured out onto all people. And today, on the 28th of May, at 11.15, the Spirit of God is poured out onto us afresh. And in the story of Acts, these followers of Jesus, we see that they are, the Spirit is poured out onto them and it changes their lives and they go out into the world filled with Jesus' Spirit and they shine, like Moses' face shined. They shine in the world. And that is really what a Christian does. They are to be people who shine in the world. Without shining, it's not like a, a halo. Uh, I've got a picture of someone in a cornfield here. Um, it's not really like, like this. That's not really what it means to be a Christian, to feel kind of slightly elevated above the world. To be a Christian is a lot more real. That shining light is a lot more real. And there's something in the world today where people are crying out for light. They're crying out for a shining presence in their light. Isaiah echoes the Exodus story and he says, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. People throughout history have been crying out for light. And You might have heard of this thing called seasonal affective disorder. It's something that doesn't really affect people at this time of year. But in the winter, it really affects people's mental health. You might know the band Oasis. I googled um, Oasis, uh, which songs have the word shine in them. Here we go. Rock and roll star. I live my life for the stars that shine. Cigarettes and alcohol. You could wait for a lifetime to spend your days in the sun. Shine. Well done. Slide away. Let me be the one who shines with you up in the sky. I heard that the shine's gone out of your life. Some might say, some might say that sun follows thunder. Yes. Go and tell it to the man who cannot. Hello, because the sun don't. All around the world, these are crazy days, but they make me shine, acquiesce. I only want to see the light that behind your eyes. Magic pie, my star will shine. You feel the love. Thank you for the sun, the one that shines on everyone who feels the love. The Hindu times, you're my sunshine, you're my rain. There's a light that shines on, shines on me. And the last one, stop crying your heart out. May your smile shine on you. Shining, people want 
people to shine on them. They want sunshine. The world is crying out for a people who shine, filled with the Spirit even. What does that look like? Well, we're in this mini-series. We're at the end of a mini-series. We've been going through uh, Exodus in our Sunday services. Last week, Emily, uh, she looked at how Christians are people who hunger after the presence of God. And this week in our passage, Moses, he's still up on the mountain. He's kind of coming down the mountain after, um, after the presence of God, after he met with God. And he's, uh, he's come down, and he's come down with the Ten Commandments. He's met God. He's seen the glory of God. And now he's been asked to get these two stone tablets. And onto those tablets, he writes down the Ten Commandments. Uh, the, in verse 28 of chapter 34 of our reading, it says, write down the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Moses brings down this covenant with these stone tablets, the Ten Commandments. And his face, he's unaware that it's shining. He's radiant. One translation says that his face shot forth beams. And this shining we read about, it's like the word evokes in, in the Hebrew is zeal or vigor or vitality. The, the word for shining is lots to do with like warmth and passion. So Moses comes down looking like that. And Moses, and the people, they see Moses, that they're afraid. Something's visibly changed in him. He's almost awe-inspiring. It's like he's been in the presence of this totally other God. And he gives them the Ten Commandments, the covenant, which we're going to look at in a second. And when he's finished, he covers his face with this veil. And we see that whenever he goes into the Lord's presence, he lifts the veil up, he uncovers his face. But when he comes out to speak to God, speak speak to God's people, he covers his face up. There's lots going on in this passage, but this for this talk I, I want to focus on two things. So what does it mean for Christians to shine in the world? What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And the first thing is, Christians shine. Christians are filled with the Holy Spirit. Not because of what they've done, but because of what God in Christ has done for them. Right now, let's just hold that image of Moses' shining face in the forefront of our minds. Because this is the key to the passage, really. And it's the key to help, helping us understand what it means to be a Christian. The context is really important. Moses, he's just been at the top of the mountain. He's bringing down the Ten Commandments from the mountain. And what's held in these commandments, it's not just rules. In fact, what we see is that God gives Moses a covenant. And a covenant is the agreement between God and his people. It's held together in, with law on one hand, so it's totally secure. And love on the other hand, because it means something to God. Because his heart is inclined towards these people. So God gives his people this covenant that is totally secure and totally loving. He doesn't give these commandments just because he wants a compliant people. He gives the covenant because he loves them. So this covenant is an act of love, a bright, warm, radiant act of shining love. And Moses, who's in the presence of this God up the mountain, this God who's totally awesome, totally other, totally almighty, he comes down, this God comes down to Moses, and then Moses comes down to these people. God shows Moses his goodness and his kindness, and then God comes down to his people. Moses comes down to his people and shows them the goodness and the kindness of God, the shining love of God. And today we can have that fullness of that love readily available to us, because Moses, what he's doing, he's acting a bit like Jesus acted. Jesus, who was God, came, was in God's presence, he's in God's presence. He comes down to people in the person of Jesus Christ. God came down to us today as a person. He brings that shining, bright, incredible love of God to us today. 
And he sends his spirit on his people to put that love, if you like, in our hearts. So we carry it. So it doesn't really rely on what we've done. It's all totally reliant on what God's done in Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 3, the Apostle Paul uses uh, this story that we've read, that we heard, of of Moses to talk about the ministry of the Spirit, the work of the Spirit. And he notes that with Moses, this shining, this radiance, it's transitory. So it doesn't last forever. It would fade. But the thing with Jesus Christ is that this light, this shining light, it doesn't fade. It's not reliant on how you feel day to day or your actions or or what shininess you can kind of muster up if you take the right vitamin pills or whatever it is. It's dependent on Jesus Christ and what he's done for you. It's dependent on him. And if he's poured his Holy Spirit into your lives, which he has, and he wants to do it again and keep doing it, that shining light isn't going anywhere. If you have a bad day, he's going to stick around. And so we can look at our lives and we can know that we take Christ into the world wherever we go. And we might never know what impact that might have. It's not dependent on what you and I have done. It's dependent on what he's done. Secondly, Christians stand and shine in the gap, like Moses did and like Jesus did. So what does this mean we're supposed to do? Jesus has done something incredible for us, but what do we do? Like, like what's our job here? Do we just stand here? What do we do? Christians are to stand in the gap, like Moses did. They hold God in one hand because they've met him in the person of Jesus Christ. And then, and then they hold the world in the other hand, because that's what Moses did, the people. He held the people in one hand. That's what Jesus did. He held the people in one hand. So you hold God in one hand and the people in the other. And this was fully completed in Jesus, who came to earth as a person. He stood in the gap and on the cross, the weight of the world, all the failure, all the brokenness, all the sin, all the shame weighed on him. And it, it broke him. And Jesus, who, the, Bible, the Apostle Paul uses the phrase, who in, being in very nature God, totally awesome, totally almighty, powerful, wild, other, he, he became a person and he gave up all of that power on a cross and he shone that light of giving it all away for you and for me today. It's a light, that is a light that doesn't, fade, that is not transitory. Jesus, by giving away his light, by shining, by giving it all away, he gave it all to you and to me. And so the walk of the Christian, like the life of the Christian, the stuff that we're supposed to do day to day, is to do that, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. To be a Christian means to stand in the same place as Moses, of Jesus, in the ministry of the Spirit. And this is particular to our own lives. Wherever you find yourself, you can shine. If that's a relationship that you're in, you can do that. If it's like a work situation, you can do it there. Maybe it's with your friends. To be a Christian means that you stand with God in one hand and the world in the other And you bring the world closer to God. And you bring God closer to the world because he lives in you. This week, I went to visit a homeless ministry where a member of this church serves. And they serve food. They do a Bible study. uh, They give out clothes, showers to their guests. That is what it means to shine in the world and to be a Christian. To serve the poor. I was speaking to a couple in, uh, in this church, um, and he'd gone through a bereavement a few years ago and when he, when he was a younger guy. And 
someone joins their, some, their, their group, their home group that meets in their, in their home, and uh, this person who joined their group had gone through a very similar bereavement at a very similar age. So this guy, he took him under his wing, he looked after him, he supported him, he checks in with him. That is what it means to be a Christian, shining, filled with the Spirit. I was speaking to a mum in this church who was really wrestling with how to have like a, a proper good conversation with her daughter so that her daughter doesn't feel weighed down by shame or performance and standards that show that she can thrive in an emotionally healthy way. That is what it means to shine in the world and be a Christian filled with the Spirit. I was talking to a lady who was part of this church and her and her friends, they're really passionate about the environment. And she told me she's passionate about it because she believes it was given to us as a gift from God, not just to, to mine and to have and to hoard, but to bless the world and to be around for her as a good thing and for her kids and for her kids' kids. And so she's formed a little group and they talk about how they, and they've come up with ways of how they could better care for the world that we've been given. That is what it means to shine in the world and be a Christian filled with the Spirit. I was speaking to a guy in this church, he's got a busy job, um, and he often describes his work environment as chaotic, um, but he told me he, he feels like he's a missionary in that job. He's, his work, he calls it ministry of the Spirit, and he wants to bring the peace of Christ into that chaotic workplace. That is what it means to shine in the world and be a Christian. I was talking to um, a member of our congregation who, who knows someone's part of his, his group in his church and he finds getting around quite tricky. So he goes and he brings him to church every week, he looks after him. At the moment, this guy's in hospital, he's really not well. And this guy's been getting around him, getting beside him, visiting him, coordinating, kind of family coming to see him. That is what it means to be a Christian shining in the world, filled with the Spirit. I was talking to a lady who's part of this church and she's not very well. She finds it hard to get into church. It's really tricky. But every night she prays for this church. And she prays that God would bless it. That is what it means to be a Christian filled with the Spirit, shining in the world. And the silver lining with this is that sometimes we're just going along for the ride. Moses was given a pretty serious job. He had a job to do to deliver these commandments. And, and you and me, we've all been, God asking us all to do stuff. He's got like individual things that he's asking us to do. But the interesting thing about Moses is that this, this covenant in the, held in the Ten Commandments, it was a big part of God's people's identity, but it wasn't the whole part. A massive part of their identity was that one day they would have a place to call home. And Moses never got there. He never saw what we read about is called the promised land. He never got there. That was someone else's job. Moses wasn't part of that story. But that doesn't mean he wasn't important, and it doesn't mean it didn't happen. And that's, in a way, the point of Pentecost, of being filled with the Spirit, is that it's not just a, an individual thing for where you are. It is that, but it's way more than that. Because God pours his spirit out on all, y'all, everyone, you and all of us. It's not solely reliant on you on your own, which is great comfort. Do you remember the story of my friend Din? Here's a picture of Din. There he is. Um, after all my attempts to tell Din about Jesus or invite him along to stuff, nothing really, really ever worked out. Well, about 18 months ago, we, we can keep his picture up. Um, about 18 months ago, uh, Din wrote to me, and he, um, he found my email address. I don't know how he found it. He found it from somewhere, because we kind of lost contact. And he said, oh, Bob, uh, I really need to get in touch with you. Um, I've become a Christian. And I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, what? What? So I, I kind of replied and got his number and phoned him as quickly as I could. Uh, so this is what had happened. So. Um, Din had gone off to university in the UK, and then he graduated from university, um, and he, uh, he couldn't get a job in the UK, he couldn't find a job, and he wanted to get a job in kind of project management, engineering, 
so he moved to Australia, and he got a job uh, working in the mining industry in Australia as a project manager. Um, eventually, the city he, in the city he was living in, in Australia, he met a girl from New Zealand, and uh, they liked each other, they fell in love, uh, they got married, and she was a Christian. And she was part of this church. And Din wasn't really part of the church. They weren't really sure about it. He wasn't really sure about it. But he liked the people there. Um, so he would go along every now and then. Um, and eventually he went off and did um, an Alpha course. And Alpha is like a uh, short course that does an introduction to Christianity, really. And, uh, and Din became a Christian in that church. Uh, eventually they moved um, to a town um, on the west coast of New Zealand called Wanganui. Um, which is very far away from the northwest of England, really far away. Um, and he's got some kids, and he had these, these skills that he'd picked up in project management. He didn't really know what to do with them, um, but he, he kind of offered them to the church. He said, you know, I can kind of get stuff done and get things organized. Um, do you need any help? Um, and the church was like, yes, please. Actually, uh, can we hire you? Um, so now he works for this church. Um, my mate from school, who had no interest in faith whatsoever, who liked cricket and guitars, and um, I thought would never become a Christian, became a Christian, but it had nothing to do with me. It had absolutely nothing to do with me. And I, I take great encouragement from that story because I didn't have to do anything, really. God used someone else who was filled with the Spirit. Those Christians in Australia who all had pretty normal jobs, pretty normal life in a normal part of the world, slightly better weather filled with the Holy Spirit. They shone a light into Din's life, and it's changed forever. Do you want to be part of a story like that? Shall we stand? We're going to pray.